Hello, this is Matt Leonard for the Foundry, and in this video on New Cake, we're going to be looking at the new Open Splines tool that we find in the Roto and Roto Paint tools. So here in Nuke, let me give you some examples of where we could use this Open Splines tool. So for instance, we have this shot of these cranes. Now not only do we have the scaffolding that normally would be quite difficult to get a mat from, but we also have these very thin wires. And this is where the open splines can really be useful just for getting a roto or a mask from something like this. If we move across to something a bit more organic, you can see in this plate we have some extremely fine branches and bushes here. Again, normally this would be very difficult to do in a traditional roto method, but using our open splines we could do this much more quickly. If we move over to our third example here, you can see on this green screen plate we have some extremely fine hair. Now granted, because this is shot on green, we could usually pull a key from this, but if there was an example, for instance, where this was against a normal background and not a green screen, it would be very difficult then to get a mask or a mat from this hair. But again, with open splines, this becomes very easy. Now we're going to be focusing our time on this fourth plate, and you can see here we basically have this rope coming down with this person climbing. And if I play through the shot, you can just see what it looks like. So I've just put it on zigzag and you can see that this would be an example where you may choose to color correct this wire or rope. And this is where open splines again can be extremely useful. So let's just stop the plate, rewind back to frame one, and let's have a look at how we actually go about drawing one of these open splines. So I'm going to go ahead and select this piece of footage that we're going to be using. And I'm going to come across to either the Roto or Roto Paint tool in order to use the open splines. I'm going to use the Roto tool and I could use the hotkey O if I wanted or of course use the tab function. That then immediately drops under our read node and you can see that really not much has changed from first glance. However, if we come across to our Bezier and B spline option here in our little side toolbar, you'll see that at the bottom this is where you're going to find the new open spline tool. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to come across to my viewer and I'm going to lay down some points. So I'm going to click and drag and it brings out a kind of a bezier handle with these two additional green and purple handles. We'll talk about those in a moment. So let's click, move down a bit further, click again, and you can see on this second click you're beginning to see the width of our open spline. Let's just finish it off with a third click here. Again, just drag out the bezier handle just to give us a nice smooth curve. Now, in order to close this, I can either press Enter or Escape, and that exits the creation mode. So I pressed Escape, and you can see we now have our completed shape. Now, you may be wondering if it's possible to make an open spline that's actually in and of itself closed. Well, you actually can. If we again just make sure we choose the open spline tool from the menu, we can then click, click, and we'll come round and the way that we close this is we actually click on the first point that we created. So I'm going to click and drag just to get a nice smooth shape and you can see now we have an open spline that's actually closed. Now at the moment you can see from our roto node that the output of this is going directly into the alpha channel. So let's go ahead and have a look at that so we can see what these two curves look like. So I'm just going to in my viewer come to my channels and just choose alpha. Now you can see that we have our first open spline that literally gives us a nice mask or mat in white here in the alpha. And then our closed one that we just created again there visible. And in the viewer, if I press O to turn off the overlays, you can see that more clearly. Now if we want to reopen this open spline, we can again make sure that our overlay is on. We can choose the point in which we want to reopen this, select it, right click and right near the top you can see that we have open close shape and if I choose that you can see that we now have an open spline. Okay from here let's just focus in on this original line again. So I'm going to drop back to our normal RGB. I'm going to swap the output of this just to RGB as well so I can see the splines and I'm going to hide this open spline too just so we don't need to see it anymore. Then I'm going to focus in on this section here. Just go to one-to-one. One. I'm going to drag this section down a little bit just so we can see a little bit more what's going on in the viewer. So the first thing you'll note is that this open spline has a thickness and that's controlled by this width control here at the top. 
if I use my middle mouse button, I can actually affect the size of the width using my virtual slider. And if I hold down shift, we can get a much more coarse control. And if I hold down alt, I'm going to get a much finer control. So I'm just going to drag this down until it covers the wire. Somewhere around there looks about right. Let's leave it around three. Now these red lines that define the outside or the width overall are called in Nuke hulls. And we can determine whether we see those based on a menu here. So we can have it on selection, which is what it comes in as by default, on drag, always or never. So for instance, when it's on selection, if I click off of it, you'll notice they disappear. But the minute I choose it, they again come back and you can see the width. If I come across to on drag, they disappear until you click a position and then you can see that you can see the edge of those. If I then say I want it always, whether I've selected it or not, I always see those hulls or the width. And if I say never, obviously we're never going to see them even if we click this and move it around. Okay, so I'm going to tend to leave it on either on selection or always, depending on what you want. On selection works for me for this example. Now we can also make changes of the width on a per point basis. So we can do that by actually clicking on a point, such as this one. And you'll notice, as we've seen before, that we have this green handle and this purple handle. Let's focus on the green handle first of all. If I click and drag, you can see we're able to increase the thickness of the open spline at this particular point. Let's close it up a little bit and again choose this top one. And again, I can increase the thickness. Now, having increased it, you'll notice that we have this nice rounded end. Now, we're able to change that shape to a flat shape if we'd like by coming to the Shape tab and just choosing rounded or square. I'm going to choose square for the time being so we get a nice square end. Now, if we shift click and choose a couple of points, we can now use the handles again. And you can see as we do that, they're both now increasing based on the amount that we're dragging. So it's very intuitive the way it's working. Let's just push them both back a little bit. So again, this one, I'm going to move back to a smaller amount. Now, if you find you want to get it back to exactly what you started with, choose a point or multiple points for that matter right click and right near the top again you can see that we have this reset width and if i do that it will reset the width back to what we initially set it at based here at the top this three that i added in there another thing to note about the width is if i choose to come in and make another shape so let's come in and choose another open spline and begin to click you'll notice that the width now is three that's carried across from the last time i made that adjustment while this tool is open so as I begin to draw, draw, and draw, we're now getting that as a width of three. Again, by pressing Escape or Enter, will just let me leave that creation process. Again, let's just close that one and refocus back on our original spline here. Let me choose this point again. And remember that we had two handles. We've talked about the green one. That adjusts the overall width. But we also have this purple one that we haven't discussed. What this does is this affects the feathering. Now we can feather the entire thing in a pretty normal way by just coming to Roto and adjusting the feather here. So as I increase or decrease that, you see we're able to adjust the feather. But as with other Roto nodes and other tools that we have in Nuke, we're actually unable to adjust the feather on a per point basis. So let me just reset this feather back to one. And again, if I choose now the purple handle, not the green one, but the purple one, I can pull out these dotted lines and you can see we can now feather this particular point. And I could again do it for this one as well. The great thing is, again, if we click on the point itself and we begin to move it, those feather lines move with it and the feather remains set on what we want. We can still come into our main Roto tab here and adjust this linear or smooth option and that again has a massive effect on how the interpolation from pure white to black takes place in this particular feather setup. Now if we want to reset the feather we can again right click come down to our menu and you can see that we have this reset feather shift E is the hotkey and that will reset the feather and again I can do it here this time I'll use the hotkeys directly shift E and that just removes the feather again. Now, talking about feathering and moving points, we can also animate everything as you would hope and expect. So for instance, we've done everything so far on frame one. If 
I just move to frame 10, you'll notice that the wire has moved. So I'm just going to click and move this into place, click and move this one into place, and then just move down and again just click and move this one into place. Let's go to frame 5 and again make some changes. So let's just drag this over and let's do it again on frame 15. Quite a dramatic change here. So again just move those over if we feel like adjusting the Bezier splines, we can, of course, do that, as opposed to moving the actual points. So it looks like it's pretty steady at that point. Just make a slight adjustment to the Bezier curve. And then again, at the very last frame, let's just make a change there. You can see it's kind of moved back as the climber is going up the, uh, the cliff or the rock face. Now, if we hit play, can see that open spline updating. If I don't want to see it again, I can of course come into here and say never so we don't get the outside. We can just see the red. I can put it back to on selection and potentially turn off the viewer control just by pressing O in the overlay. And you can now see that. Obviously, I would need to set keyframes on other frames, but you can see how that's moving really nicely. We can also, if we find a more extreme frame, maybe something like 13, come in and look at motion blur. So I can come from my roto tab across to motion blur. I could choose either based on shape or global. And if I just increase my motion blur here to something quite extreme, maybe five, you can now see that we're getting a really nice motion blur. If I just zoom in there and again reduce it to zero, you can see that goes away. So all the normal things that you would expect we can do from this, including things like cusp and smooth. So again, if we just zoom in and maybe choose this point, you can see we've got these nice Bezier handles. I can come in and I can right click and I can say smooth, just using the normal Z command, or I could use cusp, shift Z, and then obviously the Bezier handles will completely disappear. So again, Z to smooth, 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 or shift Z to cusp, cusp, and eventually it just goes away to a linear point. So again, I'm just gonna add a bit of smoothing to that. So that is the Open Spline tool. Incredibly flexible, gives us the ability to do things that would have been almost impossible before, rotoing things like hair, fine wire or rope, even things like vegetation, branches, twigs, things like that. So a very flexible, a very powerful addition to Nukate. So this has been Matt Leonard for the Foundry.